Hello beautiful friends of the internet. Today we are going to be talking about calling the corners and how you can do this in your own spiritual practice. So you do not have to be a witch per se to call the corners. I have a friend that isn't nearly as witchy as me but calls the corners just in her own meditative practice. Uh, it just feels nice. You're inviting the elements into your home. It doesn't have to be this dark mystical thing that nobody does and nobody talks about. It also is something to be respected but you know take things into your own and interpretation. That is the thing with magic and practicing magic or alchemy or whatever you want to call it. It is all up to your own thing. It's yours. It's special for you. So don't let anybody tell you how you should be doing it. You're doing X, Y, and Z wrong. This is just one way to do things and I'm going to show you that today. But recognize that you can totally make this up into your own. So to start out, I want to let you guys know why we would call the corners. There are a multitude of reasons. To me, it really sets the scene or sets the tone of the room to be something that is very chill and relaxed and it it creates this like peaceful aura for me. Uh, for some, myself included, it is also a source of protection. If you do believe that negative forces are at work or you need more protection, when you are doing spiritual work for yourself, it is a good way to invite in protection. It is also a good way to keep you connected to earth because you are going to be calling out to the corners and to the elements. So if you are really into earth magic, this is also a great practice. Uh, you can also cast circles within calling the corners, but that's not what we're gonna focus on today. So rest assured that this these can be used together. So before we get started, you want to make sure that you have all of the tools that you're going to need because something that I really truly live by when I do my practice, again, this is just mine, this could be different for you. In my practice, I really like to have all of my tools with me. I don't want to step outside of the corners that I've set once I've done it. It almost creates like a invisible boundary for me. So anything you're going to use during your spiritual or magical practice, you want to just have everything with you. Make sure everything's accounted for, kind of mentally walk yourself through what you're going to be doing and have everything with you. If you need hot tea with you, make sure you already have it before you get started. Um, if you want to play music, if you need certain candles, plants, any kind of herbs, a uh, fire, a lighter, anything. Um, also make sure you're being safe. If you need fireproof dishes, please make sure you have them have them on hand and maybe even have water on hand just because for that reason. Be safe always. But you're going to go ahead and start in the northmost corner, whether it is right in your vicinity or in the northern corner of the room. Most cell phones, if not all of them at this point, have compasses if it is a smartphone. Use it. Utilize it if you're not sure where the north or any of the corners are. So you're going to go to the north, face the north. You can choose to bring a wand or any kind of utensil that you want. I really like to use a plant to symbolize earth. You can use a bowl of salts. And I have candles in almost all of my practice because candle magic is my jam. So. Um, I also bring a green candle to symbolize earth and when I do this I will first close my eyes and I will visualize what wet earth smells and looks like. So I will really walk myself into that visualization and get in touch with mother nature. Before you get started, you may even consider wanting to go outside, stand barefoot on some grass to ground your energy. Uh, if you feel that that's necessary, I would actually do that first. Then you are going to get your lighter if you're using a candle and just so you could say these words or say any variation of words that you choose. I I like to say to the guardians of the north and to the element of earth, I invite you in for my practice today. I ask that you witness my devotional time and that you offer protection or, you know, whatever earth correlates to for you, you can ask for it during this time. So then you'll light your candle and then you will turn to the east and to the east. Uh, I like to use for the element of air, which is to the east. I like to use a yellow candle to symbol sig signify air. I like to use incense uh, to signify air. And I also will, sometimes I keep plane tickets because that's air travel, uh, you know, travel by plane. So I will keep things like that with the element of air. And same thing like with earth, I would say to the east and the element of air. I invite you in for my practice. I ask for protection 
protection and I will also do the visualization while I'm lighting the candle where I envision wind brushing through my hair. I'll think about trees even from earth being having their leaves like rustled a little bit. Um, I'll I'll think about the smell of crisp fall or summer or spring or winter air, whatever we're inviting in. And then I will move to the south and the south correlates to the element of fire. Honestly, I don't have too much to represent fire. You can also work with crystals if you want to for this. You don't have to have candles. Crystals are a great representation as well. Um, just really any kind of representation is gonna work for you. But to the south and the element of fire, I will do the same. I always have a candle present and I also sage during this point. You could do this before as well or even after or both, but I will take the time here to actually sage myself, sage my space, and I will call out to the south and the element of fire and ask that it bear witness to my devotion, offer protection. Maybe I will say that I'm working for like fast rapid magic and um, I really want fire to be present to help me work with that to bring things about quicker in my life. Um, my astrological chart is actually fire dominant so fire is my favorite element. I work with it the most to activate magic and then I will go to the west corner or for water to water and I usually have a blue candle present for this and I often will use moon water or fresh spring water that I have collected to signify water and again just like with all of the others I will call out to the west and the element of water ask for protection ask that th that water and the guardians or gods and goddesses will bear witness and offer protection or you know maybe I want to really get in my feelings this would be about water and I would say like you know help me to bring in like emotional balance or help me to work through x y and z uh, whatever that might be for me and then this last one is pretty optional it depends on where you are spiritually but I will actually go to the center of where I am and I will call upon spirit if I feel like I need to or want to. I often will bring an offering of coffee or some kind of alcohol or whatever. Maybe it's bread, um, some kind of offering, and I will call upon my ancestors and my spirit guides and ask them to be with me, to bring me messages from the beyond or to work with me in some way or to just be present. You know, in the morning, if you guys again follow me on Instagram, you have seen I call upon my ancestors almost every morning and I set coffee out for them and I have coffee with my ancestors. I don't see them or hear them, but I feel them. So I know that they are there. Um, again, that's totally optional if you feel like you want to do that. Um, I always do it. If it feels like you are scared or unsafe, I would not recommend doing that. You need to always make sure that your energy feels safe and secure and protected because you do not want to invoke anything beyond if you are not ready for it. That is the biggest mistake I feel like that people make when they start to dabble in magic is they don't feel safe and then they have an unsafe experience. So um, as long as you feel grounded and centered and safe and you are exuding a natural white peaceful light you're going to be fine that is my personal opinion there are so many opinions on how you can do this but from there you're gonna take any tools that you're gonna be working with get things set up to go forward so that is how you call the corners so thank you so very much for joining me for this I hope that helped you and gave you some insight a lot of people ask me where to get started and I feel like a very simple calling the corners is a really good intro to practice even if you just want to call the corners and then sit in the center of them and meditate that's a really good way to connect with the elements get yourself centered grounded and start to practice things but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, all of the fun places. I have so much going on over on Twitch, so make sure you're following the, me there if you haven't done so already. And I will see you guys in a future video. Gotta make sure there's no lipstick on my teeth. Of course there is. This is why dark lipstick it's cute in practice and witchy as hell, but like the worst.